First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions, was brought to you by Newport First Sand Jamaica Limited, the first on the land. For first and in the field, real issues, real solutions. This morning, our focus is on intricacies of pest and disease management in onion and Irish potato production. Now, this is very important information because, of course, our farmers are now in Irish potato and onion planting. And uh, it is critical for them to understand not just how to plant, but how to prevent pests and diseases from getting into their fields and destroying that which they have worked so hard for. Joining us this morning, Donovan Price, agronomist, research and development, Newport for San Jamaica. Good morning, Donovan, and welcome back to the show. How are you? Good morning, Althea. I'm not too bad. How are you this morning? I am great. Good to have you on with us. Joining us as well, Siobhan, little product development agronomist. Siobhan, how are you? Giving thanks. Good. Good to have you on with us. Donovan, let me start with you because, of course, uh, it is important for us to, at the top of this conversation, focus a little bit on the relevance of a pest and disease management program in crop production. Uh, but of course, we want to emphasize Irish and onion production. So how critical is this? Uh, very critical. Um, w when you're doing crop production, whether onion, Irish, and there are many factors that affect crop production. One of those main factors is pest and disease management and any farmer, any onion farmer, any Irish farmer will let you know that if they're seeing certain pests or disease in the field, they're going to be worried. So pest and, dis pest and disease management is an important component of crop production. And these pests and diseases can have detrimental if if effect on the operations by affecting the quantity, the quality, the marketability of the crops grown, and ultimately of food security. So. To understand this better, let, let's put a few things into perspective here. So, based on the FAO, it is estimated that annually up to 40% of the global crop production is lost to pests each year. And that can cost the global economy over 220 billion US dollars. And then, with the presence of insect pests, it's costing global crop production over 70 billion US dollars. To drive home the importance of pest and disease management, we want to take a page out of the book of history and let us go back between the years of 1845 to 1852 um, in Ireland, where Irish potato was a major crop, was one of the major crops in, in, in that country. And because of the, the incidence of late blight, which Mr. Little will go into, it decimated the entire crop throughout the country that led to over 1 million people um, suffering starvation, malnutrition, and other disease. It also caused the greatest immigration movement that has ever happened in Ireland. And this is just because one disease wiped out a main crop that caused an entire country to topple within that time. They call it the Great Hunger are the great famine of Irish potato in between 1845 to 1852. So w what we're seeing here is that this component of crop production is not a component to be taken lightly, especially now that we are in the peak of our Irish and onion season. Every farmer, every onion farmer, every Irish farmer has to pay very close attention, especially also that we are in the wet season, the rainy season, where a lot of these diseases tends to become a new chance to these crops. All right, so very important then for us to understand what is going on, and I'm very happy that you share that historical perspective as well. So, Donovan, what then are some of the issues of pest and disease management in onion production? Let us start there. We're going to treat them separately. Okay. So th there, are, there, are, there are several issues um, what we're looking at onion production in terms of pest and disease management. We have fungal infestation. Now, one of the key fungal pests that affect onion is the purple blotch. And every onion farmer will nod their head in agreement to this. So you have the purple blotch, 
the downy mildew, the botrytis, that affects these crops. Now, the purple blotch is so important. It's such an important fungal pest that it can decimate, it can eradicate your entire field in a matter of days. Just by identifying the symptoms in the field, in, in a, in a, then in a couple of days, when the conditions are perfect, then it can decimate the entire field. Now, what happens is that the, that fungus is called the alternary pori, that, that's the purple blotch. And it has the characteristic of a purple to brown lesion on the blotches on the leaves or sometimes the onion bulbs. Now, what happens is that this fungal disease, or most of the disease here, for down the mildew botrytis, tends to develop and spread more rapidly in humid and wet conditions. So now, we're in the rainy season, and this is going to be a particular pest of focus for all onion farmers. Yes? Now, the downy mildew also has a significant impact on the crop. It's a fungal infestation that also affects the leaves and the bulbs of the onion. It is normally identified by leaf yellowing and the dieback of the leaves. So the leaves begin to die back from the tip coming down. And sometimes it has white and then purple fungal growth. Now, some key points. With the downy mildew is that it typically affects the leaves of the onion plant and every onion farmer will know that onion plants don't produce a lot of leaves and you want to ensure that you maintain your leaves because it ultimately affects the size of your bulbs yes so when you have a downy mildew that affects the leaves it becomes very important um pest disease to, to, to manage and next thing with the downy mildew is that because it's affecting the leaves, it reduces the photosynthesis ability of the leaves. So what happens is that photosynthesis is a process by which plants make their own food and they get energy. So if there's a reduction in photosynthesis, then the plant can carry out its natural processes efficiently and consistently and therefore affect the growth of the plant and the development of the plant and the bulbing stages of the plant. Uh, in severe cases, though, if the downy mildew is not um, controlled, which Mr. Little will touch on in the solution section, you'll get what you call bulb rot. And what happens is that, that that disease can affect the bulbs directly if not treated um, in time. Then we have the botrytis, or we call it the botrytis leaf blight. Some persons will call it the botrytis leaf spot. And it's depicted by white sunken spots on the leaves which are usually the first sign of infection. They sometimes have a light green halo and may appear as water-soaked spots on the leaves. Now, the botrytis fungal disease thrives in very cool, humid conditions. And it is, as, as, just as with the bunny mildew, can affect the leaves and the bulbs um, in general. One of the things with the botrytis as well, the impact, is that it can lead to a reduction in onion yield as well as storage issues. So what happens is that onions that are infected with the botrytis leaf blight or leaf spot can have a shortened shelf life due to development of rot during the storage. So you pick your onion and you're saying everything is okay, but the onion is infected with the spores of that botrytis leaf blight. And then you put it in thin storage, then eventually those onions begin to rot in storage and that is how detrimental um, that disease is. Our next issue is weed infestation. Now onions cannot compete with weeds. They don't have the ability to compete with weeds uh, due to several things. One, onions have a short stature. They, they don't have a branching uh, um, ability like most plants. Um, they have very few leaves. They have shallow root system and they have extremely slow growth during the initial stage of onion establishment. So weed infestation is a critical factor of onion production that you want to control. And one of those things that we recommend is the use of a scale bed technique that is, that is one of the best approach to control um, um, weed infestation. Now, for farmers who, who, who bypass a scale bed technique tend to run into a problem with weed which lends, lends itself to an increase in labor costs and also damaging the, the onion plant. So let's say, for example, the nut grass. Some persons call it the onion grass. 
what they find is that these roots will wrap around the root system of the onion plants. So when you send in your laborers to weed out the plants now, what you find happening is that as they pull the nut sedges out of the soil, it pulls on the onion plants and therefore damaging those onion plants. So weeds, weed management is critical as a part of a pest and disease program. Um, weeds also serve as a habitat um, for other pests and disease that will affect the onion plants. We have other in, um, insect issues that, such as trips, worms. Now, one of the things that um, a lot of farmers um, tend to not um, um, keep into focus is the life cycle of certain insect pests, such as trips and worms, and how these pests work. So, for example, with trips, trips are what you call sucking insects. They will feed on the top of the plant. Worms are biting and chewing insects. And each of them have a life cycle. For example, with worms, you will have the moth that will lay the eggs. And within three to five days, those eggs will hatch. Now, one female moth can lay between 200 to 300 eggs um, a day. So what you find is that within three to five days, those eggs hatch. And then the worms go through different five development stage, which begins to feed on the leaves of the plant. So if, if the onion farmers aren't cognizant or aware or knowledgeable of the life cycle of the pest, it impacts how you control the pest. And so these are just some of the issues that do come up in um, onion production. And another one is water pH management. There are some chemicals, some products that operate on, on certain pH range. So a pH can range from acidic to alkaline. And what will happen is that you will have a product or an insecticide or, or a fungicide that operates at a pH of, say, 7. And you, your water pH is at a pH of 9 or 8. So what will happen is that as soon as that chemical touches the water, it begins to break down the, 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 the viability of that product. And therefore, you're not getting as much effect out of the product when you're applying it. So what comes into focus is what we call resistant management. So you want to manage your, your product application so as, not, so as to prevent the pest from developing resistance against the products that you're applying. And then we have improper pesticide application timing. So normally, um, there are best times to apply your products to control these pests. So if you're applying in a very hot day, what you find is that you're going to have minimal effect of those products that you're applying. And then we look at incorrect application rate of the products, where some farmers just mix based on what they feel like to mix. So sometimes they can over mix or um, they can under mix in terms of the application rate and therefore not getting a, a good control over the, the insect pest population or disease population. All right, so very important issues you have pointed to there, and I know that we'll come to the solutions in a, a, a little bit from now. We take the break. When we come back, we're going to be hearing from Siobhan Little about the issues of pest and disease management in Irish potato production. Farmers, you can now prevent and cure fungal diseases with Eradicate Systemic Fungicide from New Purpose and Jamaica Limited. Eradicate is effective against rust in coffee, citrus, sugarcane and peanut, black and yellow cicatoca, early blight, mildews, purple blotch in onions and other fungal diseases. Get your Eradicate at your nearest farm store or at the New Purpose and office to a 2B Worry Wolf complex. Stay in control with Eradicate. the feature first and in the field real issues real solutions this morning the intricacies in press and disease management in onion and Irish potato production is what we're discussing we have with us Donovan Price agronomist research and development and Siobhan Little product development agronomist and before we took the break Donovan pointed out the issues in terms of pest and disease diseases that uh, farmers will encounter in onion production fungal infestation, purple blotch, downy mildew, botrytis, 
weed infestations such as nut grass or onion grass as some of us call it skeleton grass in some parts of the country insect infestation including thrips and worms water ph management improper pesticide application timing and incorrect application rate of products and uh, we now invite Shavan to share some information with us as well uh, in terms of Irish potato. So what are some of the issues of pest and disease management in Irish potato production, Shavan, that farmers might encounter out there in the field? Right. Thank you, Alvia. Well, Mr. Price would have highlighted some very salient points which are critical aspects of managing pest and disease in, in any crop, really. So it's a similar case for our Irish potatoes, right? So we have um, insect pests, viruses, um, fungal and bacterial issues that would also impact the production of our Irish potatoes, right? So what I'm going to do is just highlight a few of these um, issues that would be of economic concern to our farmers, right? So in Irish potatoes, some of the insect pests that are of economic concern include our worms so like the army worms like the tomato pinworms because you know the Irish potato is from the Solani family a similar family as our tomatoes so the pest that would affect our tomatoes similar pests would also affect our Irish potatoes right mites are also an issue white flies and aphids and all of these pests are issues because they damage the foliage of the plant in various ways, some of them by chewing, some of them by sucking, right? And of particular importance is the management of our sucking insects, right? So our sucking insects would be like your white flies, your aphids. And why is it important to, to control these insects? Because these insects oftentimes are vectors or carriers that transmit or transfer virus um, from one plant to a next. So they're not just damaging the plant, but they're also infecting the plant. So that's a double whammy um, in our, on our plants in terms of the impact that it can have on our productivity, right? So we have to be very observant in our field. We have to conduct routine scouting, routine monitoring, and have a keen eye for the appearance of the leaves of our plants and, you know, to spot the various stages of damage that would be caused by the insects. Additionally, and Mr. Price um, mentioned it when he, when he spoke about the worm, is that we have to understand the life cycle of the insect pest or any pest um, really, as well as the feeding patterns that they have. And then we have to, that will allow us to be more targeted in how we direct our management and control of outbreaks. Uh, example using the white size that oftentimes it takes between six to 10 days for the eggs to hatch. And once the egg hatches, it goes through various stages before it becomes an adult. So we have to be able to, once we can break that cycle, then we'll have effective control over the insect population affecting our plants. Another issue that, that we often have, as I mentioned it with our um, sucking insects, is that they transmit viruses. So oftentimes plants may struggle because they've contracted a virus from sucking insects, such as like your aphids or your white fly, right? And the most common indicator of viral infection includes leaf curling, leaf mottling. So mottling basically speaks like irregular chlorotic um, leaf section or even leaf mosaic where you have light and dark coloration in the leaf. And oftentimes this results in stunting of the plant. And what viruses do is they reduce the productivity because they affect the photosynthetic regions of the plant. So that's a part of the plant that produces food. In potatoes specifically, we have three viruses that could be cause detrimental impact on the production. We have the potato virus X, the potato virus Y, and the potato leaf roll virus. In regards to fungal issues, right, the two most common ones that our farmers would be aware of would be your early blight and your late blight, right? So the early blight disease, it's characterized by dark brown circular spots um, which have margins and concentric markings on the leaves or the stems, right? It can also affect the tuber, and when it does affect the tuber, 
it you, you normally see black sunken lesions um, in the tuber. So it affects both the growing plant as well as the tuber. With respect to the late blight, it is characterized by irregular black water soak lesions that appear on the leaf surface. The stems of the affected tuber, affected plants also exhibit similar water soak lesion symptoms. And as Mr. Price would have indicated, wet conditions causes the severity of this disease to increase because it creates an environment that is conducive to the rapid growth and spread of the pathogens that cause these issues. So it's critical that we pay keen attention to um, these various factors that can influence production. Also, Mr. Price have touched on weed, and weeds are also problematic in Irish potato production. And there are two main reasons why weeds are problematic. One, they compete for resources with the plant. So we're talking about the water, the nutrients, the sunlight. So all of those, the plant needs to grow and to be productive. The weeds are going to need those to grow and be productive as well. So they're competing for that. And then the second one, which is also very critical, is that they're an alternative host for insect pests and pathogens. So what that means is when you have weeds in and around your plot, we, it's possible for disease and other pests to spread from the weeds that you have and give you a problem in your field. Right, so those are some of the main issues that, that we'll encounter when we, we, when we are managing pest and disease in Irish potato. All right, and I'm going to stick with you a little bit, Shavan. I want to touch on the solutions, what I'm going to. I know that uh, an integrated pest management program is, of course, very important. So I wanted to guide us through that. And then I know that you also have a line of uh, of products that you, you that are on offer for the farmers and farmers it's not free <laughs> uh they they you you have to make sure that you include this in part of your in your plan so i'm going to talk a little bit about that and then i'll bring donovan back in to touch a little bit on field assessment appraisal and training session so let me start with you though to talk a little bit about the importance of that integrated pest management approach Absolutely, Althea. So the integrated pest management approach, it's an approach that we encourage all our farmers to utilize in their, in their operation. Right? Why is it an important um, management approach that we recommend? Well, it's because the strategy of IPM, it's a long-term strategy. So it's one that allows the farmer to be more intimately involved in managing his operation. And in so doing, he'll be able to prevent pests, deter, um, prevent pests and their damage, as well as, you know, use different techniques in how he manages the, the operation. So critical to integrated approach is looking at what you can do from a cultural standpoint. When I speak of a cultural standpoint, what am I referring to? You know, some of the practices, the land preparation activities that you heard Mr. Price mention with the steel bed technique. Um, to reduce the, the, the amount of weed pests that you're having. There's a similar concept that we can use in, 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 in when we're controlling weed, 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 weed issues in our field, right? We also talk about um, using resistant varieties of the, the, the particular um, crop that we're growing. So different crops, so, you know, we have hybrid varieties and we have all sorts of works happening um, from our seed producers to give us varieties that are more resistant to some of the pests and disease that are out there. So these are some of the alternative ways or some of the management approach that we should take into, cult in, into our cultivation because we can't just pick up any old, old seed and plant that and say, you know, we're growing. We have to ensure that the planting material that we're using is clean, right? Ensure that the habitat, the area that we're going to be utilizing, it's created our... Um, prepared in such a way to limit some of the factors that can affect us. So when I talk about habitat um, preparation, talking about, you know, ensuring that you have proper drainage so that water doesn't settle in the field, creating a, an environment to allow for pests and disease to, to, to breed up and multiply in the area. 
And of course, critical to your IPM is your scouting and monitoring. If you're not scouting and monitoring your operation, then it's going to practically be impossible for you to identify when an issue is going on. And really, the quicker you can spot an issue, the better it is, because if the issue persists for a prolonged period, it could reach a stage where it, it's past the point of return. And that is really the crux of our PES, our integrated management approach. So monitor, then once we monitor, we're able to adjust our operation in terms of if we need to do a pest, pesticide application, um, if we need to do weeding activities, these are some of the critical points, right? And basically the approach takes into consideration, you know, physical things that you can do in the field, biological things, so use in encouraging beneficial organisms in the area, so like, you know, your what um, that feed on some of our um, harmful pests, um, the ladybug that eats the aphids, so those are some of the things that we encourage. So we don't want to be rampantly or, or widely just using it, um, pesticides all the time. We want to be targeted in our approach. Right, which is why it is called an integrated pest management uh, program because, of course, you're thinking of all of the variables. All right, so people think of Newport for San Jamaica Limited in terms of fertilizers, but you're more than that because you, you also have... Uh, the, the pesticide line of products and the spray equipment. Tell us a little bit about that, Shavan. Most definitely. So we have an arsenal of pes pesticides, which is, an, uh, which is an asset for the successful management of pest and disease in our crop. So we have products in, um, to fight fungal infection, right? So we, when we talk about products to fight fungal infection, we're talking about that. We have our Victory Plus. This is relatively new. Um, the active ingredient is metalaxyl, and a uh, bonus for the victory because it also contains potassium phosphide. So potassium phosphide is basically a, a molecule which helps to strengthen the plant's resistance to disease. So in, in addition to metalaxyl controlling the, 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 the fungal um, pathogen, we also have potassium phosphide, which is actively strengthening the plant's tissues to resist disease. Right? And what Vitri Plus can be utilized to control um, effectively is like your early blight, um, your late blight, your downy mildew, right? And uh, we also have Enigma, which is also another systemic fungicide, which active ingredient is Theophany methyl. And it's also effective in controlling early blight, late blight, downy mildew, leaf spots. We also have Clearway, and Clearway is double All right, double so active. hold on to the Clearway. Hold on, Shavan, to the Clearway information. We'll take that when we come back from the break. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now... 6.46. Introducing the Keyplex line of products distributed by Newport Force and Jamaica Limited. Keyplex Jumpstart to get your plants off to the right start. KP120 to promote root growth and plant development. 350 DP, chock full of micronutrients to maintain your crops. KP625 with micronutrients for your citrus trees, other fruit trees, nut trees, and corn. Plus Blossom Formula with chelated calcium, chelated magnesium, and boron for a wide variety of growth and tree crops. The Keyplex line of products distributed by Newport First and Jamaica Limited, the first on the land. So we're into the final segment of the program for this morning. We continue our conversation with the team from Newport for San Jamaica. And we have with us Donovan Price, agronomist, research and development, and Siobhan Little, product development agronomist. And before we took the break, Siobhan was just about to tell us uh, more about Clearway. Siobhan? Right. So Clearway, which is double action, meaning that it has both contact and systemic properties, Right. It's effective for controlling um, issues or diseases in both our Irish and onion. 
So some of the disease of importance that you controls include the purple blotch, downy mildew, your leaf spots, early and late blight, as well as fusarium wilt. Right? Um, another fungicide that we have in our arsenal is eradicate, which is also systemic. Right? And that controls a wide range as well, including purple blotch um, and early and late blight as well. So um, with the increase in rainfall, you, you, if you notice, most of the, these fungicides are systemic in action. So what we're seeing is with the increase in rainfall, right, it's very important that we utilize systemic fungicides to help limit and prevent the spread of fungal disease in our crops. So because the rainfall creates moist conditions, this is most favorable, favorable for the spread of our um, fungal pathogen. So it is very important for our farmers to utilize um, regularly in a rot their pesticide rotation, the systemic fungicide to help prevent the spread of um, our diseases. All right, we also have with us our, in our product line insecticides, right? And in the insecticide run-up, we have first strike, um, which is contact and stomach, with the active ingredient in doxycarp. And this one controls all the larval stages of worms that affect our Irish and onion. So it controls especially our army worms, um, also controls our leaf miners and our cut worms. Right? Those are just a few of the, the worms that it, con it controls. We also have spectra, um, which is unique in that it has this translaminar and ovicidal property. So translaminar means that once you spray it on one surface of the leaf, the chemical will actually transfer to the other, the other side of the leaf. And ovicidal in the sense that it also kills the eggs of the pest. So you remember we mentioned the cycle, the life cycle of our, of our pest. So this product targets the pest at all stages, right? And it controls a wide range of um, insect pests, including troops, if it's mice, leaf miner, as well as some certain worms like your army worm. Um, we also have sucker, which effectively controls um, pests in both our onion and Irish. So we're talking about like our white flies or mice, um, as well as some moths. And it also has ovicidal properties, and it is effective at killing the insects at various stages. No, you hear me speak about sucking insects, right? So, and the, the fact that they transmit viruses. So, first and um, we have the only product of its kind in Jamaica, that's the star viricide. And what the star viricide does, it helps to control and eliminate the activity of viruses in the plant, right? Um, how it works, or to visualize how it works, you can think about um, a mosquito infected with dengue, um, biting someone, right? You can kill the mosquito, but then the person still will be left with the dengue. You can't spray um, bug spray upon your skin to get rid of the dengue. You actually have to go to the doctor and um, take get, get a prescription which has the medication for it to take to control the dengue. So think about the star virus type as that medication to stop the virus in the plant. So how it works is the technology in it encapsulates the viral particles and inactivates them preventing them from doing further damage to the plant. And it, it, it would be remiss of me to end this section without speaking about how important it is for farmers to read the label, which provides very important information about how to use each of the pesticides that we have mentioned before. It talks about the application rates and the instructions on how to mix the product. Right? It also speaks about the re-entry period and the post-harvest, sorry, the pre-harvest interval. And all of these are important because we're not just looking about um, producing food, but we're talking about producing healthy food in a safe manner. So mm -hmm. we want to ensure that the farmers are safe. I want to ensure also that the consumers of their products are safe. And in terms of other outside of the pesticides, in terms of the tools that we have to assist our farmers, in this warfare for plant health, we talk about Mr. Price would have spoken about water pH management. So we have pH meters to provide that 
in, important indicator to our farmers of their water pH level so that they can better um, ameliorate or modify that, 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 that pH level to increase or maximize the effectiveness of the pesticides that they're using. We also have citric acid that can lower the pH levels of our water because we know in Jamaica, being a limestone parent material, the water level tends to be alkaline in terms of the pH. In terms of spray equipment, we have various knapsack sprayers depending on the farming operation or the level of farming operation that you're doing. So we have the knapsack sprayers that are of different sizes to meet your requirements. We also have accessories and parts for the repair and maintenance of these equipment. And finally, we also have personal protective, personal protective gears to help to maintain the health of our pesticide applicators. All right, excellent. Thank you very much, Shavan. We're almost out of time, so I'm going to bring Donovan back in. Donovan, you have just about a minute and a half to talk about. I don't even know if you have that much to comment on the field assessment appraisal and the training yes. sessions that you have. Yes. Come All on. right. So we may have a, a few farmers saying, oh my God, these, this is wonderful information, but how do I go about um, um, putting these practices into my field? Now, Newport First Hand has a, has a technical team that, is, that, is, that has the requisite skills and tools to come out and do a field assessment of your farm and give you the appropriate recommendations based on the conditions in the field. So farmers can reach out to us at 967-5815. Give us a call and our rep will guide you to the technical department and the relevant agronomist and technical sales consultant within your respective parish and we'll come out to you we'll look and we will we will make an assessment of of of, of your farm the ph the conditions of the plant pest and disease identification scouting activities just to name a few activities and also we we also love to share the good news that we're talking about on the radio here so we have what first and team is underway currently right across the island conducting training sessions after training sessions especially in onion and Irish potato production. So you can listen out on our social media. We are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, and on our WhatsApp media. You can check us out there for updates on when we're going to be in your area. And so Newport Person is here to serve. We are here to lend our expertise and skill set to our farmers to increase production and most of all productivity and ensure that farmers have a good good management of their pest and disease approach in their crop production for the onion and Irish potato season. Great. Thank you both for this morning. Excellent as usual. Uh, the information that you share is really very critical to our farmers and of course helps to ensure that they get the best out of the work that they're doing. Thank you both for this morning, Donovan yes. and Siobhan. Yes. Thank you, Adia. Thank you again. All right. Take care. And just before we wrap the show, let us just take a quick word from our sponsors. First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions, was brought to you by Newport First Sand Jamaica Limited, the first on the land.